How many different species of animal are there? That's a hard one to answer. I mean, you're going to have to go out and try and find them all, aren't you? And uh, there's a lot we just haven't discovered yet. Uh, there are estimates from 8.7 million all the way up to trillions that some scientists think. The thing is, the places where it's hardest to find them, we know the least about. A good example of a difficult place is the deep sea. We know less about the deep sea than we know about the surface of some of other planets in our solar system. So really trying to find out what's down there, well, we need to send people, we need samples. It's one of the things we do at the museum. Why are there no kangaroos in the UK? No kangaroos in the UK. Yeah, it's a shame, isn't it? They're amazing animals. Well, a lot of species are only found in certain places. And this makes a lot of sense if you know about how animals have changed over time. So if you know about evolution through natural selection, you'll know that animals split up can change in different ways based on the environment that they live in. Now, Australia is a very different environment, but once it was connected to other parts of our globe, so the continents that they've moved around over the years. Which means that Australia in particular, because it's separated, has lots of interesting animals that you don't find anywhere else, including kangaroos. Who first knew cows had milk? Well, well, the cows, obviously. Milk is something that mammals produce for their young. So we're we humans, we're mammals, we have milk when we're babies, and cows, baby cows, have milk. The thing about cows, though, is they're a kind of strange animal. You see, they started out as something called an auroch around 10,000 years ago. This is like a wild ox. Now, aurochs were bred and changed by humans to be more like the cows that we see today. Humans bred them in different ways to make them produce more milk, produce more meat, and to be more tame and docile so that they, they are easier to look after. And that's kind of where it started. So 10,000 years ago was when we first started drinking cow's milk. Hi guys, my name is Kerry and I am a zoo ranger here at Chester Zoo. It's a question that has puzzled scientists for a very long time, but we think we finally know the answer. And it lies in how the penguin's body is made up. You'll notice that they've got quite big bodies, but actually quite small wings. And what happened is, over time, as penguins evolved to become really, really good swimmers, in order to swim really well and to be able to dive down deep into the water, they developed shorter, thicker wings and much heavier bodies to enable them to do that diving. Now, having those short wings and heavy bodies does cause a bit of a problem. It means the penguin's wings are not strong enough to lift the penguin up off the ground. However, having said that penguins can't fly, if you watch them swimming through the water, you'll see that they flap those wings as they're swimming exactly the same way as birds flying above your head do. So you could say that technically penguins can fly, they're just doing it under the water. <laughs> <laughs> 